be misunderstood by someone you love is to feel like a child. To be humiliated or embarrassed is to feel like a child. To jump into a pool that's too cold is to feel like a child. And so it is for other things. To make mistakes, to not remember the answer, to have a joke fall flat, to toss and turn at night in fear, to lose one's way, to be caught up in a book, to roast marshmallows, to have gorged on food, to spy on a neighbor or co-worker, and of course, to be dying is to feel like a child. Status Update is a selection of short fictional pieces, never more than a lengthy paragraph each, which uh, is taken from a much bigger ongoing Facebook creative, call it a project, an enterprise, which started in late 2008, and I was intrigued by the phrase status update and also trying to figure out how one could do something to justify one's presence on this particular social platform. It struck me that Facebook was maybe the absolute bargain basement or sub-basement of artistic expression, but maybe something could be done. Fairly early on, I decided to commit to it as something that I would do every day. Part of it was about just limbering the writing muscles and making me less self-conscious about the process of releasing something for other people to look at. Facebook served that purpose as well. I, I made a, a decision that no matter, well, how much uncertainty I had about the quality of an update that I would give myself no more than an hour uh, to work on any one of them, and that pressing post was just part of the exercise. A great friend and artist, Cliff Eland, came to me as he did with so many people he was intrigued by what I was doing, and he asked if he might uh, do art responses and post them along with uh, the updates uh, just for, a, for a, a brief experiment. And so he did three or four, and I was thrilled with them. The only guidance that I gave him at the beginning, in fact, ever was I did not want a direct illustration of what I'd written. I wanted it to be a free response that was in dialogue with it. It might pick up on a detail or element, but it should not simply be a rendering visually of what was going on in um, the writing. And Cliff was absolutely f delighted with the total freedom that that gave him, and I think that freedom had something to do with his sudden decision to uh, go full in. He went on with this heroically till the end of 2013. And there was a total, I think, of about 1,760 Cliff Eland art responses to a huge assortment of updates. let drawings go where they would yes. <laughs> That's right. and he's, he's never tried to plan out drawings. Cliff's style of drawing is not something that immediately tells you uh, 
what you are looking at or how you should be looking at it. Um, you can get lost in the line work of, I mean, he gets, the, if he's doing figures, it's just like, you're not getting one expression on the character, but a whole host of things. So you, you study the face, if that's what it is, and try to extract a mood or a conflict of moods. And sometimes there's pathos, sometimes Cliff is going for uh, satiric portraiture, but it's, I love the fact that looking at Cliff's art, um, it seems to be playing hide and seek with you. It's both revealing and concealing. And as you see one thing, another thing um, goes out of focus and then comes back in. And so really, in a way, you are reading the images in a manner that is not wholly different uh, from your process of reading the text. I started writing plays at a very early age, but yeah, I, I, I felt that I just didn't have any life experience, and I didn't have a voice of my own. And writing in university and as a graduate student, the same problem came back in the, I mean, I was reading all the time and was aware of what good writing consisted of, but again, I felt I, I have no authority. I, I'm just, I'm just faking a kind of assurance of what ideas are important or why, and, and, and it took endless, endless failures of just writing a paragraph a day um, was, was so hard. The real breakthrough in terms of allowing myself to become a creative writer again is when I was writing scripts with and for Guy Madden, I convinced myself that my ideas were coming out of him rather than me. However awful the or autobiographical the content, if you put the name Davy or Lucy instead right. of George on top of it, then you've got a certain amount of of cover for for the confession. Something would show up that didn't seem to have my fingerprints on it at all. Right. And so it would just, it, it belonged to you. Um, oh, that's but, amazing. But it, that, that's the whole thing, I mean, really it removed just so much Catholic lumber. So has, have you ever flipped things around and, and tried to in, um, excite students with the same discoveries you made? Or, or have you just realized um, that that's, I don't that's know. I, that way lies <clears> madness? <throat> I think that way lies madness, but I do tell them that writing par self-contained paragraphs and seeing how much you can pack into them right. is a good way of learning more about writing, yeah. but not nearly as important as doing lots and lots of reading. So it's Guy's unconscious that's sending up all of this, this weird, nasty, extreme stuff, and I didn't... I was able to get the self-censorship thing, which was blocking me and preventing me from really going for it. Um, it. It suddenly became just being in a sandbox and playing with him. But this was the permission, the, the freedom that I had sought and not been able to find by myself. And then I was able unapologetically with none of the fears and inhibitions to just put things out there um, that audiences might dislike, might misunderstand, might um, cringe at, didn't matter any longer. For me, the, the key to art is, I mean, the, the thing that all art has in common is defamiliarization. And it's something that the imagination teaches us to do, which 
stated indirectly is recovering again and again our first time experience of everything around us, whether it's a pencil or a paper cup or a chair, I mean, or words, when we first learn words, they mean everything. I mean, you, you can actually say something and, and people know what you're referring to and that you can speak your mind and your heart and people will get it and then you discover all of the ways in which language can mislead and not give you uh, correct assessments, but there's this glory in the discovery of language and glory in acts of recognition and doing simple and complex things and then everything becomes mechanized and habituated and we can't live in fullness any longer because we're not paying proper attention uh, to what each and everything in our world might consist of. Imagination is, is necessary for the continuation of love and its proper developments. I mean, we forget who people are and imagination allows us to get them back again. So yes, the art that exists around us is there to keep our imaginations alive and well, to prevent them from dying and to have us end up with these grotesquely diminished versions of the world that is ours, the life that is ours, the sense experience that is ours. I mean, what could be more uh, consequential than that?